Hey everyone, welcome back to Unity Roundtable, a series where we discuss Unity-related news, tips and tricks, tutorials, and more. Last week, Unity hosted the first live Unite event since 2019. Unite is an event that enables creators from around the globe to connect and learn about the latest tools, tips, and services to build, run, and grow their games. A day full of deep dives, breakout sessions, a virtual concert, and so much more. The event started with a keynote, with local meetups hosted in Austin, Brighton, Copenhagen, Montreal, and San Francisco, followed by several informative talks hosted by Unity team members, various industry veterans, and respected game devs. Here's a quick recap. UI Toolkit is reaching full functional parity with IMG UI for customizing the editor and is coming soon in 2022.2 text stream. We heard that as your production scaled, IMG UI didn't scale with you. This means you'll be able to do everything you can with IMG UI with better separation of concerns, more flexible layouts, and advanced stylings. In the latest text stream, Unity now uses UI Toolkit to generate default inspectors. This means that all UI Toolkit custom property drawers will work everywhere. They've also ported common built-in property drawers to UI Toolkit so you don't have to write custom inspectors to personalize the appearance of object properties. They've also added tree view controls, a vector drawing API, and a new editor design system for modern and consistent UI. And coming soon in 2023, Unity will be adding a new data binding system to display dynamic data in your UI with less code. The extended Ending the UI editor talk, used an editor UI inspector to showcase how the editor UI is fully rendered by UI Toolkit in Unity 2022.2, and converted a component that had default inspector elements into something fully customized. You can find a link to this talk in the description. Unity also announced that they are working on modifying the render workflow in order to allow using both HDRP and URP in a single project. They're also working towards bringing URP to parity with the built-in render pipeline. Forward Plus, which I talked about in a previous video, is a result of those efforts. While discussing HDRP, they mentioned a lot of the things that I've already shared in my latest 2022.2 coverage videos, which you can find in the info card and description below. But they also went into greater detail regarding a few of those things. For example, the new features for building dynamic environments. Here's a quick list of everything that you'll be able to use to create beautiful environments natively in Unity. Wind distortion for HDRI skies, which can also be driven by flow maps, physically based skies for realistic sky lighting simulations, a cloud layer system that can use up to eight textures for creating endless variation, volumetric clouds that are lit by the sun and the environment, cast shadows on the landscape and interact with the wind, volumetric fog to create realistic light shafts, blending seamlessly between weather states using HDRP's volume system, a water system to create seas, rivers and lakes that can also interact with the weather states and volume blending, and finally the adaptive probe volume system that automatically and rapidly scatters light probes throughout your environment. In the How to Light Your Environment with Unity talk, you can see how light maps and reflective probes, camera exposure, adaptive probe volumes, ray tracing, and path tracing can be mixed and matched to create impeccable lighting based on the render pipeline and platform you are catering to. Unity also announced that DirectX 12 is finally out of experiment. In 2023.1 text stream, you'll see better performance for CPU-bound applications and support for graphics jobs in the editor for better responsiveness, as well as access to improved features such as DirectX ray tracing, with ray tracing also going out of preview next year. Evolution means we'll be moving ray tracing out of preview next year as well. There was also some quick coverage of Unity's DevOps systems and features, such as Plastic SCM, Cloud Build, and Cloud Content Delivery, showing off the web-based source control experience, how cloud build ties into it, and how remote config can be used for a smooth, patchless user experience. Netcode for game objects provides very useful networking features without a learning curve. If you're a Unity developer looking to get started with multiplayer games, you already have the skills to use Netcode for game objects. This works great with Unity's gaming services for scalable hosting, matchmaking, lobby management, and voice chat as well. There's been a lot of talk about dots by other content 
content creators here on YouTube, so I won't get into it here. But one thing I will mention is that ECS is finally leaving its experimental phase, coming soon to Unity 2022.2 text stream. This will come with Unity physics, Havoc physics, netcode, and the graphics package. There was also a really interesting talk by Rohan Yadav about dots and scaling mono behavior, which you can find via the link in the description if you're interested in learning more. With the use of the physical hair shader, eye caustics, adaptive probe volumes, and high quality area light shadows, you are able to create incredible digital humans in Unity. Unity discussed how they experiment with new graphical features and eventually bring them to the engine once they are matured. And one of those features is the strand-based hair system, which is available for you to download on GitHub. Other features include a more performant skin attachment system, new shaders to make the skin and eyes more accurate to real life, and tension tech to drive wrinkles, blood flow, and micro skin stretches. They released a new version of the digital human package on GitHub as well. Unity has also addressed how using all those features allows you to create great looking humans, but only in controlled environments like films and cutscenes. If it's not done right, human facial movement looks uncanny. The 4D capture approach that we used with enemies avoids this problem, but that is not practical for games where it must be possible to interact with characters. With the integration of Ziva and the tools provided by Weta, you will soon be able to bring the same level of reality to interactive and playable characters. They also showcased an interactive version of the enemy's demo, which is now finally available as a standalone executable for you to download and run yourself. The Lion demo showcased at SIGGRAPH 2022 is also coming in 2022.2 text stream. And finally, here are some quick highlights from Unity's 2023 roadmap. Shader variant pre-filtering, prefab replacement, unifying asynchronous constructs as async and await, memory profiler, material variants, shader graphs full screen master node for custom post processing, custom passes, custom render textures, local volumetric fog, and more, VFX graph instancing, boolean ports, six-way lighting, and timeline scrubbing, adaptive probe volumes, enhanced visual quality and additional GI improvements, SLP coexistence as previously mentioned, and block shaders that bring a new intuitive of syntax and unified shader offering workflow across rendering pipelines, URP improvements such as forward plus, LOD crossfading, decal layers and temporal anti-aliasing, and so much more. If you'd like more details, make sure you check out the keynote and all the talks yourself via the links in the description. And that's all we've got for you today. If you like this Unity Roundtable update, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Unity Roundtable is powered in part by my patrons, the subscribers of Andrew David Plus. By subscribing, you get early access to videos, behind the scenes content, exclusive monthly video updates, access to join our private Discord hangouts, and more. Thanks for tuning in. See you on the next one.